Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Marcus Stepford and today I would like to talk to you about the design and coupling of local energy markets, which is a new way of trading energy. But to understand why we're actually talking about a new market design, we first need to understand how the market works today. So today the energy is largely traded on auction markets in a so-called double-sided auction. So a double-sided auction, for example, that is uh, traded on the APEX spot, uh, is an auction that sorts the bids and offers. So the offers to generate electricity and the bids to consume electricity. And this is done using the marginal cost. The marginal costs are the costs to generate one more unit of energy, for example, one megawatt hour. And when it is sorted, we first have the renewable sources, so solar and wind, then usually nuclear, and then afterwards, this depends from country to country, but as an example in Germany, the next source would usually be lignite power plants, then there's coal, gas, and lastly, oil. These are the offers to generate energy, and the bids are also sorted in a descending order, so from highest to lowest, which we can see here. The intersection between those two curves are then the, is then the spot that uh, makes the clearing price and also the capacity provided to the market. So for example here, this would be 70 euros per megawatt hour and 65 gigawatts that are delivered to the market. Every uh, producer to the left of this curve or the striking price gets those 70 euros while everyone else simply gets nothing. And this price and the capacity that is provided is provided in a specific price zone. So for example, here we can see different price zones. Some countries have one price zone for the entirety of their nation. So for example, Germany and France, while others actually have split up their country into different price zones like Norway and Sweden. And while this, uh, why this plays such a big role, we'll see in a bit. Because the price zone actually and the market design all are based on the technical system that lies behind it. But the technical system is changing, which is causing quite a few uh, issues. So to understand that, we first need to know what kind of system the market design is actually based on. So in the past, the typical uh, technical system was set up in a way that we had big fossil power plants that feed in energy at the high voltage level, which is then distributed uh, through the medium voltage level to large consumers, so mainly industry, and lastly also low voltage to smaller households that also then consume simply smaller amounts of energy. So this was a fairly simple system, and this is also the, uh, the system that the market design was made for. But today, this system is actually changing quite a bit. On the high voltage level, we have uh, offshore wind turbines, for example, that feed into the grid. But also on the medium voltage level, we have big solar parks and wind farms that feed into the grid. But also we have industrial consumers turning into prosumers, so consumers that also produce energy using their PV system or also having battery system. And furthermore, on the low voltage uh, side, we also have, for example, PV and batteries, but also we have households that actually then have PV systems, they have batteries that also feed into the grid. And also we have uh, electric vehicles and heat pumps that are new participants in the market, which couple the energy system with the mobility and the heating sector. And as we can see, this system is largely different from what the market design was actually based on. Now we don't have a monodirectional flow from top to bottom. We have bidirectional flows, so also low voltage can feed into medium voltage and so on and so forth. So we have a very different technical system. And this is causing uh, issues also then on the economical side, as we have that changed technical side, but we keep the market design the same which then results in high redispatch costs. Redispatch costs are simply costs that the grid operators have to pay to stabilize the grid. So these are costs that are added to the system additionally. And in the last decade, we can see that these costs have increased significantly. So as we see, there are lots of challenges that are uh, being faced in, within the system. 
especially by also those new participants within the system. But they also offer new possibilities. So for example, there's solar and wind, which have very low cost of generation. And furthermore, due to their decentralized nature, they decrease the grid losses, as well as they, uh, that they increase the resilience of the grid and the entire system. We also have batteries, which are able to balance the supply and demand and shift some of that energy. They are easily scalable, and they can also help to stabilize the grid. Furthermore, we have the electric vehicles, which can be flexibly used, adjusting their time when they charge, as well as uh, providing vehicle to grid and vehicle to home. So they, uh, instead of only charging, they can also feed back into the grid or actually power somebody's home. Furthermore, they have a very high capacity. Um, while electric vehicles usually have a capacity of 50 to 100 kilowatt hours, a normal home battery only has five to 10. So we're talking about a factor of 10 here. And lastly, we also have heat pumps, which can also be flexibly used. And they have a storage system that is simply very inexpensive since to store heat, usually water is deployed. So all of these new possibilities can actually be incorporated in a somewhat new market design. And this is where the local energy markets step in. Local energy markets can kind of be imagined as a cell within a bigger system. So we have a local energy market, which usually is on, let's say, a low voltage level. And it is the price of uh, several households, for example, that have PV systems, that have electric vehicles, that have heat pumps and batteries. And all of those can already maybe trade with each other instead of always having to go to the national grid or the national market like the APEC spot. And there are two ways that they can do this. In a decentralized manner, meaning they trade all with each other actually, so everybody talks to everybody, or they can do it in a more centralized manner where there's a platform established, they send their bids and offers similar to an APEC spot for example, and then the market price and the capacity is actually found for that area. Both have their disadvantages and advantages, but for now, to keep it simple, I would just like to focus a bit more on the centralized uh, aspect. So the centralized methodology as well as the decentralized one, of course, can also incorporate then uh, simply smaller producers, for example, PV or uh, small wind turbines, but also batteries or uh, vehicle fleets. So for example, a parking lot could then be used to actually provide flexibility within the system. They then trade within each other, trying to balance out uh, their system within itself already to the best of their abilities. And any surplus or deficit is then simply balanced out using, for example, uh, the APEX spot, which then provides energy or buys the surplus energy from the grid. So how would this local energy market actually fit into the system? How could they integrate? Um, well, first we can uh, use those local energy markets, those smaller cells, and integrate them into bigger cells. For example, regional energy markets, where we first have those local energy markets which try to balance out uh, their system within themselves. And then the regional energy market, which also has other uh, participants, just like industrial consumers or bigger wind parks, then also represent a system within themselves where they also try to balance out the uh, supply and demand to the best of their possibility. And lastly, of course, if there is a surplus or deficit, we can then again uh, go to a bigger market like the APEX spot to balance uh, out the rest. And this cannot only be done for one regional energy market, of course, we can also have other regions with also this type of structure. And how would the energy system then actually change from today's system to uh, a future system with local and regional energy markets? Well, today it's fairly simple. We have auction markets like the APEX spot that cover the entirety of, for example, Germany, so one price zone, and that one price is set for all the locations within that area. But in the future, the role of the APEX spot would become smaller, while local energy markets and regional energy markets make up a bigger part of it, as they are able to then represent the grid better and representing issues within the grid 
And uh, on top of that, due to this hierarchical structure, it is easier to see where energy is being generated and consumed, as well as to know what type of quality uh, the energy actually has. So is it green, is it local, or is it uh, fossil energy? But to this day, of course, there are still some hurdles to overcome to realize local energy markets. So on the one hand, we have electricity pricing. These days, usually households have one fixed electricity price throughout the year. So it does not matter where the energy is generated or consumed, so the distance, or it also doesn't uh, matter at what time it is consumed. So when there's a lot of energy available or very little, you still pay the same amount. Same goes for the grid fee, you stay, pay one amount, but also the structure is very counterintuitive to this concept of local energy markets because uh, the grid fees are paid depending on the voltage level that you use, but they're always added on. So the lo low voltage consumer always also pays the high voltage and the medium voltage grid fees. This was fair uh, in the past, as the, back then the high voltage uh, level was the one where energy was produced and then simply handed down through the grid. But these days where consumption also occurs on the medium and low voltage level is not really that true anymore. Then we also have fixed feed-in tariffs for renewable energy generation, which kind of distorts the market in a way that uh, it, there's no incentive for them to adjust their production to the actual consumption. Also, small market participants that want to supply energy to the system can't really do so because uh, to do so they would have to fulfill the same requirements as large-scale energy suppliers. And lastly, of course, there's also software and hardware issues. Households would have to have a smart meter, for example, so a digital energy meter. They would probably also need a home energy management system. And of course, there would also be a communication infrastructure be required to set up these local and regional energy markets. So the following are the take home messages. The first one is that the current market design was created for a system that doesn't really exist anymore or is fading more and more. The discrepancy between the technical and the economical side that is increasing more and more also increases the total costs of the system. Local energy markets with their hierarchical structure can represent the grid better and thus also help reduce the burden on the grid and also lower the energy costs. But there are still several legislative and technical hurdles that need to be overcome for local energy markets to be realized. With that, thank you very much for your attention.